Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing five tips to help you stand out as a software engineer. So just before I start, I wanna mention a couple of things. Firstly, this is to improve you as a software engineer, not as a coder. Uh, this won't help improve your coding or your coding style. Um, that will be covered in a separate video. This one is around software engineering, around how to deal with the business, how to plan, how to organize, um, how to communicate, etc. So the tips are more revolved around that. These are five tips that I find very useful myself. I could have chosen hundreds, hundreds of tips. I might even do another video in the future um, with five different tips. Uh, but yeah, just limited to the five to keep the video short and pick these five because I think they're, you know, they're quite important. So let's move on. Tip number one, understand the business, understand the domain. It's so important to understand what the company does in order for you to make decisions. How can you make an informed decision if you don't fully understand the big picture of what the company does, of what the process is, or um, what market they target? If you're in a tech company, it's most likely the case that the company is revolved around the product. The product is built by the engineers or the software engineers. So it's so important for the software engineer to understand uh, why the company is doing what they're doing, understand the approach, the philosophy of the company so that they can instill that in the product itself and also so they can make informed decisions. If you want to make long-term decisions about the, you know, the technology, how to split the teams, how to anything, you need to understand how the company works, how the company operates. Also, it makes it so much better if you're talking to the, you know, the exec team or one of the senior managers around the, the product that you're building and how it helps, um, how it helps improve the, the vision of the company, you know, how it fits in with the company. You know, it makes you sound a lot smarter. It makes you seem like you understand where the company's going and you make decisions based on that. And that can be a very good look if you're trying to move up on the, in the chain. Tip number two is to learn how to communicate effectively. As a software engineer, you're kind of in the bubble of the, the tech team a lot of the times. There's the whole business around you. You need to be able to communicate what you do what the product means, what difficulties you face to the rest of the company. If the CEO comes up to you and says, hey, why have we not been able to release? You need to be able to communicate that effectively. They might not understand all the technical details. They might not care about the technical details. You need to be able to say it in a way that's gonna help them understand. Um, if you've heard of the, the kind of the phrase, explain like I'm five, that's essentially what you need to practice. You need to take a technical term and be able to explain it to non-technical people. If you're a senior, if you wanna improve and go up the ladder again and you want to explain things to the junior developers if you want to help out the the new guys you need to be able to explain you know the technical approach the architecture the decisions you made while coding if you're a startup and you want investment you need to be able to communicate your vision you need to be able to communicate your product if you can't communicate that effectively you're not going to convince anyone you know to to buy into the product it is very difficult because you need to be able to essentially translate the technical difficulties or the, the concepts in so many different ways to so many different people to, to understand it. So another thing that comes under this are, are meetings. People love to set up meetings. A lot of meetings are a complete waste of time because people don't have an agenda. They're not prepared. So they go in and they just say everything that comes into their head. One big tip for effective communication, especially when you have time, is take the time to prepare. Uh, obviously, when you're talking one on one, you kind of have to improvise in a sense you just have to say what's on your head that's why sometimes it can go on for a while but if you have time to prepare gather your thoughts put out some bullet points if you've got a meeting specify an agenda you can't stick with it you're wasting time move on so if you learn how to communicate properly and you learn when to communicate and how many people to communicate to this will all help make you more efficient it will help you look smarter it will save you up so much time to do actual work which makes you look better another key part of communication as well which i've not mentioned is being able to argue your point any software engineer that's worked in the industry will have argued plenty with other software engineers about which tool is the best which approach is the best etc essentially what you're getting into is a debate and you need good communication you need to think about what you're going to say you're going to argue your points someone else is going to argue their points um, and at some point a decision needs to be made if you can't come together then you know a third party needs to make that decision but you need to start off with that good communication another important tip is to learn to simplify. It's such a common thing to have such complicated conversations with engineers. People love to show that they can deal with the big picture, but most of the time it's so much simpler to deal with smaller things. I personally can't, I can't deal with complicated um, tasks. You give me a complex task, a very complicated task, I struggle to understand it, I struggle to come up with a solution to it. So I need to take that task and I need to break it up into simple tasks. Then that's the way I can kind of manage it. And this one's a bit about perspective as well. From the product team, something that could be very simple you know is super complicated in the tech teams. You know, a product might come and just, you know, say, hey, I just want, you know, one button that will just generate a simple, you know, uh, uh, five page report, you know, nothing too complicated. From your point of view, 
that's you know, that's really complicated. You know, there's there's so many things you need to think about. You need to think about the infrastructure. You need to think about the reports. You need to think about the styling, the the, the you know the technology behind it. There's a lot of things, and non-technical people might not always understand this. And this is where you need you need to kind of pair this with the communication that you've you know that you've approved upon, and you need to give them feedback and say, all right, I can do that, but you know we need to break it up into these smaller chunks, which make a bit more sense. Tip number four is ask questions. This one is so important. I could have covered this as a side note um, in some of the previous tips, but I wanted to explicitly have it in its own tip because of how important it is. Everyone's been in that meeting where you just don't understand what is going on. I've been in it, and I'm sure most of you have been in it as well. You're sitting in the meeting, uh, people are chucking around acronyms, they're chucking around big words, you just have no clue what's going on, you know, and you put on the, you know, the, the kind of the serious face, like, yeah, cool, yeah, you're, you're nodding, you're nodding, yeah, let me just, yeah, let me just take that notes, he, okay, a big word here, acronym, question mark, can you figure out what that means, that's fine, everyone, everyone goes through that, um, then they turn to you and they're like, okay, uh, you know, what's your thoughts, or, you know, are you, is that something you're going to handle? At this point, you have a very difficult choice to make, you can go one of two approaches, number one, ask the question, get clarity, you know, understand the problem and hopefully be able to come up with the answer or the solution or defer it to later. Number two, just be like, yeah, um, cool. Yeah, I agree with Jim. Yeah, Jim made a good point. And I think, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's what you do. But you're going to regret that one later on. It's difficult. I know it's difficult. I've been in that situation. It's difficult to admit that you don't understand what's going on because you don't want to feel stupid. You don't want to look bad in front of your peers. But everyone's been in that situation. They all have been in that situation. They're not going to look at you badly if you ask them the question. If anything, it's, it's a good thing to ask questions. You need the confidence to be able to ask the questions. If you don't have the confidence, there's different ways you can approach it. You can word the question differently. One approach you can do is just say, look, I, I'm, I'm a bit lost, you know, can you help me out? And if you're worried about you know, feeling stupid, you can always twist the question and ask it in a different way that won't make it sound as bad. So if you understand, if somebody's asked you a question and you don't fully understand the, the context, but you understand part of it, you can always start with, okay, I understand that you know, I understand ABC, but I'm not quite sure what you mean by the rest of it. Can you elaborate on that? You know, if you've ever pitched or done a presentation to investors and exec team, people with lots of experience, they're going to have lots of questions and have detailed questions and they expect detailed answers. People will also argue the opposite side, right? You don't want to ask too many questions. And now you're kind of hearing conflict tips, right? Ask questions, but don't ask too many. I'll clarify that right now. If you find yourself asking a question, which they explain, then you have to ask a second question. They explain, if you've gone roughly two, three questions deep and you still haven't gotten the full picture, it probably means you don't understand the fundamentals enough, right? So at that point, it's better almost to step away and just say, look, I don't think I fully understand, so let me go and do some research or let me go and try to understand or let's, you know, let's take this offline and, you know, whatever, if it's in a meeting. But basically, you need to understand the fundamentals and then come back to it. The fifth and final tip is don't get attached to technologies or tools or processes. You need to be flexible as a software engineer. You're going to be working across different projects with different teams. And frankly, sometimes you're just not going to have a say in what tools to be used. And if you're not there from the start, there's going to be a lot of decisions that have been made way before you joined. So if you're lucky enough to be on a new project, absolutely, you know, push the technology, try, you know, argue your point, try communicate it effectively. But you need to accept the fact that, you know, there you know, might not be in the right scenario to implement your feature. There might be people more senior than you that will effectively just make the decision. An executive has heard of the new fancy microservices thing that everyone's jumping on and they're going to want you to make it. Sometimes a decision is out of your hands and there's not much you can do about it and you just need to accept it and move on. It is a huge sign that you're relatively junior or inexperienced if you constantly argue that your technology is better than the rest. An important thing to, to remember is that the best tool for the job is not necessarily the right tool for the job. And what I mean by that is if you have a tool that's you know faster or more efficient than the current tool, it doesn't mean that it's the right one for this company. If, for example, if you're in a company that have been going for a while, they've got an existing team all of, you know, JavaScript engineers and you've come in as, as the new guy and you know that Rust or, you know, this new bleeding edge technology will be much better, much faster. And if you can prove that, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right tool for the company, right? The company's got heaps of JavaScript engineers. They would have to retrain everyone, right? So it might not be not might not be worth it. What about in terms of hiring? How easy is it, is it to get resources? Can we reverse the decision if we regret it in a few months? It just might be out of your hands. You, you can't always make that influence. And sometimes that's okay, right? We need to think of the tools that we use as just a means to solving the problem. As a software engineer, you solve the problem. That's why you need to look at the bigger picture. You need to solve the bigger problem. The tools 
or the frameworks or the technologies are just a way of solving that problem. They should all be interchangeable. You should be able to swap any technology, any tool out and still have the exact same end product. So I've ranted on a bit there, but to summarize that one is you don't always have control. So you really need to be flexible. You need to appreciate that. Sometimes other people have more experience than you. The majority wins. There's gonna be a lot of times where you can't get your way and you just need to deal with that. You need to move on, you need to accept, you need to learn. So yeah, those are five tips. Uh, hopefully they will help you improve as a software engineer. It's hard to keep them in mind all the time, but it's something that I think you can build on experience. Let me know what you think in the, the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.